very much. Staying with homes bought and rented, we're using less colour when we decorate than the gen generations that went before us. We tend to go for beige. That's according to research from two paint companies, Dulux and Valspar, want us to be more adventurous. Well, they would, wouldn't they? If you fancy a change from beige, though, we'll be talking about the rules for using deeper colours in a minute. Instead, just painted our house ivory rope, crisp cotton, crisp cotton and snowy morning, i.e. white, white, white and more white. Well, if, unlike them, you're getting a bit bored with all this white and beige, how should you choose a deeper colour? Abigail Hearn is another interiors expert. She's got a new book out. It's called Banish Beige, so you know where she's coming from. Abigail, if you want to banish beige, then how do you choose the right colour? I think um, you need to take a bit of risk with colour because the thing about colour is it's, it's clever. It can do a million different things. It can excite, it can stimulate, it can relax. And so... If you go down a beige palette, it's a little bit, as we just heard, quite safe and quite boring. So I tend to advise people to go slightly outside of their comfort zone and just push that tonality a couple of steps darker than they feel comfortable. Mike Pierce has tweeted, I'm sticking with various shades of beige. Why? Because I can remember the decorating disasters of the 1960s and 70s. Do you think it still is a hangover from that, all those um, geometric patterns in orange and purple? I think it is. Also, I think people are incredibly scared of colour because... Because the thing about beige is, or taupe or any of those pastel hues, you're never going to go wrong. It's never going to be a disaster when you apply it to your walls. Whereas if you do what I do and go inky, swampy, bottom of the lake dark, you run a risk of it not working all the time. So I think that's what puts so many people off with this taking risks. can be expensive, can't it, if you make a mistake? How do you avoid it then, making a mistake? I know you just said be bold and take a risk, but what if you feel you haven't got money to risk? I mean, it can, but I just want to say, Winfred, it's the cheapest simplest most transformative thing that you can do putting a can of paint on your walls at the end of the day and so just swatch out a huge area swatch, swatch out it, it out swatch it out take the a big square just swatch out yes yeah, swatch out a few, <laughs> huge area go a bit darker and then just just watch magic happen because once you convert to the dark side as i have you are happier, you look skinnier. I mean, there's just so many different reasons for dabbling with dark, I have to say. I don't believe it will make me look skinnier. It will. I have to say that, OK. <laughs> um, people worry it will make the room look smaller if it doesn't make them look smaller. Is that true? That's one of those whole misnomers about colour. No, it doesn't. When you paint a small room a light colour, how much bigger do you honestly think it's going to look? I mean, it isn't. So I say go dark and embrace that intimate smallness of that room. I mean, corners will blur into shadows and you'll get this sense of mystery and intrigue. So really work with small rooms. I love small rooms and all my small rooms are incredibly dark. Just don't be put off with light colours, make small rooms look bigger because, I mean, how much bigger do you honestly think it's going to make them look? It is. Do you think the dark colours are only for dark rooms? Because that's what some people say, don't they? Don't put a bright, a, a dark purple or something in a bright room. Yeah, I mean, the thing about colour is it's incredibly personal. And I think the more rules you listen to, the more boring your interior. So try and get rid of all those rules and naysayers about do this, don't that, don't do that. And try and follow your heart as I do and just dabble. Go off radar a bit. Push a few boundaries with colour. I mean, it's incredibly transformative. Um, Harry's on Twitter says, I'm currently sitting in a dark sea blue study, bedroom Yay. pinky grey, dining room dark red, sitting room terracotta. What do you do then about the main pieces of furniture if you've got a, a colour palette like that? If you've got, I mean, that's quite a kaleidoscopic colour palette. So keep all your big, huge pieces quite neutral. Burnt caramels, lots of charcoal greys. Don't make everything a colour. If everything is a colour, it's going to end up looking like a really hot mess. So you've got to kind of work out what, where you're going to apply your colour to what pieces. But keep all the big pieces quite neutral, I would say. Abigail Hearn, thank you very much for coming on and giving us